You'd be surprised just how many of us experience anxiety when starting out in street photography. You are not alone in feeling that way. I want to share with you a few things that help me overcome this anxiety in street photography. And no, Stephen, it's not a huel. It's changed my life. And of course, if you have any other advice you'd like to share, drop it in the comments. Let's kick this off with the easiest thing for you to do, and that is gonna be removing your headphones. I like podcasts too, but trust me, this is gonna help. When we have headphones on, we actually fill in the blanks in our minds of what other people might be thinking or saying. And this increases what we call the spotlight effect. That is the effect that we think the whole world is looking at us, when in reality, everyone's just looking at themselves. This filling in the blanks of what other people might be thinking can lead to not great situations. So for example, you see a guy across the street and he looks over to you and in reality he's saying, hey, did you get any nice photos today? But because you've got headphones on, you think he's saying, oi, if you take my photo, I'm gonna break your thumbs. Obviously, he wouldn't say that, but you didn't know, you had headphones on, so you got scared and ran away. I know it can feel counterintuitive, but removing your headphones and actually embracing the sound of the environment around you will help relax you, even in a busy city setting. I live in one of the biggest cities in the UK, in Manchester, and this has helped me relax and connect with this city a lot more by actually paying attention to what's going on rather than trying to close it off. Having the free time to go out and practice photography and having the creative disposition to even want to do so in the first place is actually an amazing thing. It's important that you don't treat this like a chore or a task. It should be something that you naturally enjoy doing. I always try and remember this from Kung Fu Panda. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. And that is why it's called the present. So try and enjoy going out and taking photos because it might be the last time you actually get to do it. When you venture out with your camera, you are practicing arts because it's important to you. There is nothing to measure yourself against. So being present in the moment and remembering that you're doing this because you enjoy it is important because you don't want it to become a chore. I don't know why, but a lot of photographers, myself included, tend to rush through our photography walks. And this causes two very specific problems. The first problem with this is that if you walk into a scene and you're in a rush, you don't stick around and wait for anything to naturally unravel. Say if you were in a rush, you wouldn't notice the old lady that gets swarmed by pigeons and in a flurry of feathers and Greg's paper bags, you could capture something uniquely beautiful. But if you're in a rush, you've already moved on. You've missed this unique moment. It might just be happening behind you. This film's proper good, isn't it? Yeah, thanks for inviting me over. And the second is that we feel like guests in the scene rather than becoming a part of it. Have you ever been to a party where you don't know anyone? It tends to go one of like two ways. The first is you sort of stay on the outside of the group. You sort of stay around, not really making that much conversation with people. And after a while, because of the barrier you've created by not engaging, you decide to leave because you're uncomfortable. But it can go the other way. Just making a little bit of effort to chat to people, make a couple of jokes, get stuck in and listening on group conversations. And before you know it, you've made valuable connections and like had a good time. And the same thing happens when you're practicing street photography. If you can relax and slow down and engage a little with the scene, that doesn't mean asking people to take their street portrait. It just means, you know, photographing a bit of the architecture, a bit of what is already there in the environment and you won't feel so much like an outsider trying to rush in to grab some photos. Depending on how you first became interested in street photography, it's very likely you saw a lot of famous work from acclaimed photographers. And as well as inspiring you, this can also have some negative side effects. This might mean that when you're out shooting, you actually have a couple of different famous images popping up in your head that are either inspiring you or kind of putting you off of the images you're getting yourself. You might be thinking, how did they get their images to look like that? Or how did that photographer get so close to their subjects? Having a knowledge of the genre can be helpful, but it can also hinder your own creative expression. Instead, try to detox yourself from all other people's creative work. Try and forget what is good, because what you think is good, or what your friends might think is good, is entirely subjective. Try and forget every example you've seen. It's, it's almost impossible to do. But if you can try and forget different examples of what you think good street photography is, you will start to create something that is uniquely yours. 
With this, if you can establish your own meditative photography practice of going out, say for an hour or two hours a week, two hours a day if you can do it, then over time you're going to find the images that naturally resonate with you. And if they don't look like the images you've seen, if they don't look like the famous photographer's work, then that's actually a good thing because that means you're creating something different and you're not just copying popular photographer's work. And I know I haven't mentioned the Leica Q2 at all today. So if you want to hear some of that, go check out this video up here. I mentioned the Leica Q2 at least two or three times.